all right once again good evening so we are going to solve question four now this question <laughs> is it's worth like 10 billion dollars I, I i can i'll show you that but for the sake of my students yeah and a few others i'm going to solve it for free yeah anyway okay so let's get to it so d and e are any two points on a size on a size a b and a c respectively of a triangle a b c dj is drawn parallel to b and miss a c and j and e f is drawn parallel to c d and miss a b and f prove that f j is parallel to b c now to solve this question now we need to we i will have to give you a particular theorem that will help us solve this particular question this we call this theorem the side splitter theorem now the side splitter theorem says that if you have a line which is parallel to a side of a triangle so we have a triangle as so we have this triangle right a b c and there's a line parallel to the side of the triangle which intersect the other two sides so let's say this is the line this line is parallel to this side of a triangle right and intersect the other part of the triangle so it intersect this other side of the triangle right then this particular line that we are talking about this line divides these two sides equally or it divides these two sides proportionally so in other words if this line divides a b into less than a ratio two is to one that means this same line divides between the ratio two is to one if it divides in the ratio three is to five then divides also three is to five that's what the term is saying so we're going to use the same theorem to solve question four all right and it's very it's a it's, it's a very key important theorem that you need to solve this question right i won't say it's impossible to solve the question without this theorem but i think the ability to use this theorem makes it easier to solve question four so now let's read the question again so question four is saying that we have a particular triangle all right i'm still going to call it and let me call it just a b c all right so we have this triangle a b c now d and e are on the point a b and a c so d is on a b and e is also on a c all right, so let me draw it this way. I think this, this side, this side is fine. All right, so D and C are on A, B, and C, so we can draw the D and C. Let's draw it nicely, okay. And we know, okay, the question also says that now, D, J is drawn parallel, parallel to B, E. Oh, this is E, sorry. All right, so this is B, E. Watch here. This is B E, right? So we want to we want to draw D J so that it is parallel to B E, which meets A C. Okay. Which meets A C. So it means my D J is going to be something like this. So that's to to be parallel to B E. Alright. So maybe if we can see in the parallel point. So this is J, right? And also my yeah, also my B E also meets A C. Sorry, E F also drawn parallel to C D. So this is my C D. So E F is also drawn in that same direction. So meets F. Alright, so this this point is F. Okay. Alright, and it's moving in the same direction. Now I want to prove that F J this fj i want to put that fj is parallel to fj is parallel to bc now this is what we want to prove that the diagram is a little bit scary but yeah so we have i think we have an idea of what we want to do now we're going to use this um size splitter theorem so the size splitter you can see that the fj is parallel to us but it is not we are want to prove that right okay so okay so we want to prove that your fj is prior to what bc in other words we want to prove something like maybe fj is actually some scalar uh scalar let's use um alpha bc all right so this is what we want to prove 
okay all right so we are going to use the side splitter theorem okay now what do we know we know that your dj is parallel all right dj is parallel to be right and we know that what um your ef is also parallel to cd so these are the things that you're going to use to prove that fg is parallel to bc right okay now going to use a side splitter theorem we need to consider the triangle because the side, the side splitter theorem says that if a line is parallel to the side of a triangle right so you you must look at a particular triangle in question and see if there's a line parallel to the side of that triangle which intersect which intersects the other two that means that line will divide out the other side proportionally so if i look at the triangle a d c right triangle a d c now i know that look at something i know that triangle from triangle okay first let's consider triangle let's let's do it step by step so let's consider triangle a b e right now from triangle a b e what do i know i know that what the line d j is part of one of the side which is what b e so d j is part of one of the side b e and d j also intersects the side what for the triangle a b e d j intersects the side a b and a e so it means that what does it mean it means that what d the point d right the device the point d device a like okay what it means that if d device a b in let's say ratio 2 is to 1 that means g will also divide out a in the ratio 2 is to 1 that's what it means so we are going to we are going to use the ratio term again so if let's say we are going to assume if let's say um d device a b in the ratio mu lambda is to mu that means my d is going to give is going to be giving us some let's say lambda a plus let's say some mu b over some lambda plus mu right okay and since dg divides the two sides equally means my j my j will also divide the line a e into the same equal proportion so this is going to be some lambda a plus some mu e over lambda plus mu right so that's d and that's my j excuse me so we take note of that all right now we'll come back and come and look at triangle adc now in triangle adc triangle adc what do we notice we notice that the line fe is parallel to the side of the triangle adc that's is parallel to the side dc right and the line ef also divides out that side it also divides um the size ad and and ac in an equal proportion so it means if my f is now i have to use different scalars if my f divides the side ad let's say alpha a plus let's say beta d over alpha plus beta that means my my i'm looking at adc so that means my e also divides ac in that same equal proportion so my e is also going to be alpha a plus beta c over alpha plus beta okay so now these are the four things that we have okay yeah so things things is going to get a little bit ugly but stay with me now what we want to prove we want to prove that fj is parallel to what bc in other words we want to prove that fj is equal to some scalar bc so in other words we want to prove that let's say j minus f is equal to some alpha c minus b this is what we want to arrive at so it means it makes sense to find out j minus f so let's find j minus f okay so j minus f is just going to be your alpha a plus mu e over lambda mu uh, minus alpha a plus beta d over alpha plus beta so now it's up to you to simplify so you have to be smart with this so i'm going to do this um lambda alpha plus beta a plus mu alpha plus beta e 
but it's, this is much more this side the minus um alpha hope is good there alpha lambda plus mu a plus beta lambda plus mu d right all over their products okay so i have to simplify now you need to take your time and simplify this All right so well you see i have a here i have a here so i can factorize that a out so i'll get let's say a into bracket alpha let me just expand this part alpha a plus sorry lambda alpha this lambda alpha so you see i am factorizing a out so i'll get this minus this right so from here i'm just expanding this part so lambda alpha plus lambda beta minus alpha lambda minus alpha mu right there's the a now i'll bring my other parts so my mu alpha plus beta comes e then plus the beta alpha plus mu d okay so you bring your over this but that we're not interested in that part so okay you can see that we can cancel some things you can cancel this and that so i have i have a i have a into brackets i'm gonna be minus alpha m right plus mu into bracket alpha plus beta e plus beta into bracket lambda plus mu d okay now i don't need e and d right so i'm going to all right but your e is giving us this and your d is giving us that so you need to substitute this into your main um equation right so that's what we are going to do all right so if you substitute your e and your d in it you get the first part now you realize that your alpha plus beta can cancel this alpha plus beta here and the lambda plus mu will cancel this lambda plus mu over here so what you have to do is now to sim to expand so if you expand you get a lambda beta plus a alpha mu um you need to this will multiply this so you get now bring this a little bit down. All right. Okay, so when you expand, you get a alpha beta a alpha mu plus alpha sorry a alpha mu plus um mu beta c. Right. Now this side there's supposed to be a minus here. So when you come here. You realize that this minus affect this part and this part right and i think that's what we ignored because your minus is going to affect the alpha a and also going to affect the beta the beta d so this part so this part is supposed to be minus and this part is supposed to be minus right mm -hmm. which means this part is also supposed to be minus so please take note of that right so means this is this part is minus okay so it means i'm going to get lambda lambda beta a so a lambda beta which is what minus a lambda beta minus mu beta b right so this is what i have so some things are going to cancel out something like a lambda beta will cancel a lambda beta over here then a alpha mu also cancel a alpha mu so this is a cancel a alpha mu so i have that my j minus f is equal to my mu beta c minus my mu beta b right remember there was some lambda plus mu division alpha plus beta there was something like that here which we just left out for easy simplification. So now I have alpha beta, I have alpha beta. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to um, factorize. So j minus f is going to be 
mu and beta into like a c minus b all over alpha plus mu into bracket sorry lambda plus mu into bracket alpha plus or beta now this is actually a scalar right this thing here is just one base scalar right and what is c minus b c minus b is what is bc so my j minus j minus f here is fj and c minus b here is also b so it means my fj here is actually some equals some scalar let me call this scalar um let me call this scalar gamma some gamma bc right so it means i've proven that what fj is actually parallel to what bc using the side splitter theorem all right so um please kind of go through this video again and if you have any concerns on issues you can let us know okay thank you